What are the best budget Yu-Gi-Oh decks in the game right now? My brokies, unite! As I've constructed a tier list rating the highest budget Yu-Gi-Oh decks all the way down to... You, you probably should spend that money on noodles. And whether you're a new player or an old player, I'm gonna be giving you the information you need on the best budget decks this format. Let's jump on in. What's going on with ya, big dog? And it is an amazing day for Yu-Gi-Oh! I hope that your day, phenomenal. But if it isn't, don't let what happened at the beginning of your day ruin the rest of your day. The criteria for this budget tier list is incredibly simple. I will be ranking some of the most popular budget decks based on three things. The first one is their potential to grow and its skill ceiling. Essentially, I'm saying is that after you build this deck on a budget, can you put in more money for this deck to become powerful? The next is future support. Will this deck get more support to make it stronger? And lastly, and most importantly, how powerful is this deck right now into the Yu-Gi-Oh format? I would have to say there is a certain criteria we're looking for since this is a tier zero format, meaning that there's pretty much only one deck that is incredibly viable. Particular strategies that we're looking for play around the counters that people are using against the top deck, but also can play a ton of ways to be able to counter the top deck. And of course, like I said before, I couldn't get every single strategy, so let me know down below in the comment section. I will rank your Yu-Gi-Oh deck. If not, I'll try to put it on the next tier list. Let's go ahead and start off with Magispector, a deck that I'll admit I was coping for. Magic Specters is a deck that is based on being able to summon little guys to search really powerful spell and trap cards. The problem with Magic Specter right now, she's just not powerful enough. Like, how did it get new support that just came out in its power crap? That makes no sense. Also, a big problem with Pendulum overall is that against the toughest deck in the format, using Flame the Urge to be able to place a monster into the Pendulum spell and trap card zone means no pendulum summoning. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to say noodles are a better investment. It almost doesn't matter even if we do get Kirin because for some reason, this deck can't even pendulum summon its strongest monster. Earth Machine, also known as Super Heavy Samurai Light because it's interesting how Super Heavy Samurai have surpassed Earth Machine. I really hate to say it because as you already know, my Earth Machine boys, I'm with you to the end, but this is a deck that is also power creep. The only difference is that it did not receive support. Some of Earth Machine's biggest strength has historically been cards like Gozen Match and Rival of the Warlords, which are now limited. Skill Drain is, uh, it ain't passing the Kirin test. I'm gonna go ahead and say Earth Machine are noodles or a better investment, unfortunately. The deck does have an FTK that loses to half of the hand traps in the game right now. Right now, I just wouldn't say it's his time. Now, Plunder Patrol. Arrgh. Every time I see Plunder Patrol, I think of a few things. First of all, Plunder Patrol ship Brawn is underrated. Being able to get rid of your opponent's important spell and trap cards is a valuable effect. The next cool thing about Plunder Patrol is that their effects to make your ships can dodge cards like Impermanent Effect Veiler because they're quick effects and they can be used during almost any phase. I think even with all that, I would put Plunder Patrol in takes a really good pilot we're just waiting on that wind ship to be uberly broken. But overall, in order to be able to pilot Plunder Patrol in this format on a budget, you are going to need some top level thinking from some of the best Plunder players. They're always looking for the booty. Heroes! I just so happen to have made a hero deck profile that you guys can actually use for a budget for your base build. What I like about heroes right now is that Mass Hero Dark Law is almost an auto win. I mean, yes, Snake Eyes Fire King does have answers through Subsubversion, but we putting them on, hey, did you open it? Cause searching it may not always be the answer. I think overall though, heroes are a solid choice Yu-Gi-Oh deck. It's gonna get you your bang for your buck as a very cheap and decently successful deck. I think that the strategy is pretty fun to play, especially when you play against decks that aren't the best in the room too. Arrow Mage, well, Arrow Mage Rika. Arrow Mage got some slept on support from Phantom Nightmare. It actually got pretty much an entirely new engine that can be placed inside of the deck, a new fusion monster, a new link. It has revitalized the strategy and probably justifies the Sun Avalon hits we had the ban list before. This deck can also play up to eight 
15 hand traps. You love to hear it. And as a strategy that can play under Dimension Shifter. I would say that this strategy is the solid choice Yu-Gi-Oh strategy. It is an incredibly powerful deck that if you guys do a little bit of research, you'll start to realize why I'm ranking it so high. You could just say I planted the seeds for you to sow if you look for them. Ninjas are incredibly good at the Shadow Clone Jutsu, and hopefully we can clone more ninja players so we can be repping in full force. This deck can be built for less than $20, but unfortunately, I, I think that's where it stops. Ninjas actually does have the room to play a ton of disruptive Yu-Gi-Oh cards. And I think when this deck goes first, it can stop your opponent incredibly well. But where ninjas will consistently struggle at is the support. It feels like the deck got support 20 years ago, not last year. At Emancipators. Okay, there is one thing that's really good about this deck. Secret Village of the Spellcasters can lock out your opponent's entire strategy. Then there's also Evenly Matched being pretty decent. Come on guys, who am I kidding? It, it's still noodles are the better investment. Not only being power crept in this current format, Altergeist suffers from a really bad consistency issue. And I think that that's going to be the biggest problem that you're gonna have to overcome when playing this deck. Fluanderis! Yeah, look, I don't like it, you don't like it, but Fluanderis is still a top budget Yu-Gi-Oh deck. Dimension Shifter, Harpy's Feather Storm. This deck will stay in contention as long as those two cards stay off of the forbidden list. The best bang for your buck, budget Yu-Gi-Oh deck. But I will tell you this, good luck making friends when playing this deck. Moving on, it's going to be just straight, pure pendulum decks. You guys requested this. Pendulum unfortunately suffers the same fate as Magic Specters, just noodles are a better investment. I mean, personally, I like the chili kind, but you could do whatever you want to. Get them noodles though. Goblin Biker seen a lot of hype coming out. Players thought that this was going to be able to compete with Fire King Snake Eyes. Boy, we were coping. Now, I don't think that this deck is bad per se, it's just not in the best situation. I'm gonna put it in borderline. The best thing that Goblin Biker has going for it is that it's going to get more support. Hear me out, it's going to get more support. It is part of the Snake Eyes lore, which if you look historically back at some of the other strategies that are part of lores, like Visus or even the Albaz, every single one of those strategies have been somewhat competitive. Except for Ice J. I actually do see a lot of potential in this strategy. It has a lot of busted mechanics for an XC deck. It has a ton of potential. I'm gonna put it in Borderline. Chimera as a budget Yu-Gi-Oh deck. Ooh. Okay, so the reason why I'm doing that is because Chimera's not in the greatest spot, but Chimera with Legacy of Destruction becomes a lot better. I'm saying if you can brave the storm for right now and figure out a decent Chimera build, I would put it in borderline. This is going to be a strategy that will not knock anybody's socks off currently, but because we keep getting more ridiculous illusion cards, it's only going to get stronger. And I'm starting to think that Chimera is Konami's secret love child, because seriously, there are starting to become illusion monsters that should not be illusion. Dio Bell's mommy in illusion. No way. Illusion for you guys, because I already got her. Dinomorphia. What's really cool about Dinomorphia is that it skirt skirts most of the hand traps in the game. Imperm? Mm. Fact Baylor? Ah. Ghost Bell. <laughs> this deck is built on trap cards and using those trap cards to summon monsters that if you negate, you'll use more trap cards. This deck has actually been going on a tear for topping regionals too. I think that it is one of the top budget Yu-Gi-Oh decks. Dinomorphia has solidified itself as a solid deck now. I gotta say, I gotta give it to you Dinomorphia players. You won me over. Flame Swordsman is now budget. If you look at the maze of millennia prints, none of the Flame Swordsman cards get over that $10 mark anymore. With that being said, this is also a strategy that can play a ton of interruption. I mean, it can play 21 hand traps if you want to. The only unfortunate thing is that those 21 hand traps are not gonna do enough. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in. It takes a really good pilot. The biggest problem is that it is a fire deck. So if you go against the best deck in the game and you stop them, you still put fire monsters in the graveyard for them to continue going. The next big problem is that this deck ends on a Zodiac Dryden. It's not enough. I think that there is a ton of potential with Flame Swordsman if it were to be able to fix its inboard crisis. I don't think that playing Infernoble cards are the way, but Phoenix Gearfreed isn't consistently summonable enough. That gets fixed, the deck might be seriously good. Next is Sword Soul. I have no idea how you guys figured it out, but you figured out how to play Dimension Shifter in the Sword Soul deck, which is technically graveyard reliant. You guys are complete demons, guys, this deck top budget 
Not only does it make Imperm, Ghost Mourner, and Effect Veiler look really, really bad, this Yu-Gi-Oh strategy can actually summon some threatening boards. Sinister Sovereign Long Yuan is crazy good at banishing your opponent's cards, which permanently gets rid of the threat in this format. Next is going to be Sky Striker, the deck where if you really like this deck, the FBI just might get involved. Sky Striker currently is in a good spot if you ask me. There are tons of powerful Yu-Gi-Oh cards that allow you to be able to go second and take your opponent's monsters with cards like Mind Control to link off with, or cards like Raigeki, which ironically is pretty good in this format. Shark Cannon and Widow Anchor are still ridiculously good Yu-Gi-Oh cards. The Sky Striker deck is a lot better than what you guys think. I'm gonna put it in solid choice. This is also a Yu-Gi-Oh strategy that is getting support in the future. Konami doesn't seem to be putting Sky Striker down anytime soon like a bad habit. Hey yo, I put both the FBI decks next to each other. We got Trap Tricks next. Now I was talking to chat about Trap Tricks and I was like, hold on, wait a minute chat. For the past few formats i have put this in historically low rankings but trap tricks can make a case it can play a ton of hand traps and it also can use dimension shifter trap tricks pudica also gets rid of the threat for the entire turn more importantly i've noticed how a lot of the trap hole cards can stop threats grave diggers trap hole negates card effects in the graveyard and then network trap hole stops Holy crap, what is going on? Even the new trap hole, it ain't that bad. I still think that trap tricks does have its fair share of problems. One of them being going second, but if you're playing 15 hand traps, you should have a little bit better of a time. I'm gonna put it in portal. Virtual world ironically has been topping like a decent amount over the course of these past few weeks. And there's actually two good reasons. The first is that virtual world QB Shinchi is cash Tira Riceheart. I mean, it's not as strong but it's close to the exact same thing and the next thing is that those hand traps that we talked about are really powerful and people were playing virtual world makes look stupid because your virtual world monsters don't activate on the field i'm gonna go ahead and put virtual world in borderline this deck is just a little bit power crept it's one or two more virtual world support cards away from being really good though or hell just give it a couple of other synchro and rank options it, it might be good now sharks my boys the run is over guys i think if you playing sharks in this format you are genuinely a fish out of water unfortunately water does not counter fire the way you want it to hear me out stealth kraken can do things or you can just play better Yu-Gi-Oh decks man it really really sucks this deck's win condition used to be goes and match with stealth kraken unfortunately goes and match is limited to one the new shark cards are great, but Goblin Biker ironically does it just a little bit better. Next is going to be Red Dragon Archfiend. I refuse to give up on this deck. We know that it has more support coming out. I'm gonna put it in takes a really good pilot. I think that the deck is worth playing if you're going against almost anything not fire, which again, we don't expect to play fire every single round, but this deck's fire matchup is, what's not, my brother in Christ, we are dying. Going first, it can make red Supernova Dragon, which could be a real big threat for them to deal with, but going second, look, again, let's not talk about that. Marine Cess is pretty good. Bro, you can literally run like 24 hand traps in this deck, my boy. You could be cooking. Ironically, you won't be putting fire on flames, but you'll definitely be boiling that chicken that, that's disgusting. Bro, y'all out here boiling chicken, I believe it too. You can't tell me you ain't boiling no chicken. Overall, Marine Test is a very solid choice budget Yu-Gi-Oh deck. I want you guys to keep in mind, World Sea Dragon Z Lantis belongs to this deck because unlike the way Fire uses World Sea, this deck banishes all of the cards and then promises to never give them back. Mainly because if you're locked into water, you can't summon back your opponent's monsters, which aren't water. Bro, using restrictions to your advantage never felt so good. Crystal Beast. Bro, I hate to do this to my man's Neshi every single time. Crystal Beast are not good. It's almost a waste of cardboard that Konami gave this deck more support and didn't give it the right support. Like seriously, Konami, what is going on? Like you either make cards really, really busted are incredibly bad. There's no balance. Crystal Beast should have had way more time to shine, just like some of these other strategies that came out, but maybe that's for another video. Should I make a video about Konami's card game design and how terrible it is at times? Let me know, guys. I wanna hear what you have to say. Next here is Black Wings, my boy. I'm not giving up on the Black Wings. I will never give up on the Black Wings. It's not its format. It's takes a good pilot. Black Wings can make some of the most deadliest Yu-Gi-Oh boards of all time. If it ever makes those Black Wing Assault Dragons in multiples, 
Fire King is in trouble, my boy. They activate too many effects. The, the problem is going second and realizing you're playing Black Wings. Once they stop you, you cooked. Now, Goaty is another water Yu-Gi-Oh deck that uh, is most to douse out fire. This fish strategy is built on being able to synchro summon on your opponent's turn and its strongest monster can banish all cards on the field. Something that Fire King would never want to happen. I also love that it can naturally play Crossout Designator and a ton of hand traps. The reason why is because you can use Crossout Designator to banish your Goaty monsters and get their effects on the next turn. I think Goaty is borderline. Shifter, good hand traps, Crossout Designator, the problem? Yu-Gi-Oh has a balancing problem. And the perfect world, I think Goaty is a top Yu-Gi-Oh strategy, at least for Phantom Nightmare, because it does have a lot of the tools. But unfortunately, Konami decided to power creep the living daylights out of the top deck in the game. But Goaty does have a ton of potential, seeing that it does work with most fish cards. Oh, fish. Now, the stepsisters seem to be in one of the best formats that they could possibly be in. Players using the graveyard more than they use a shower head. Dimension Shifter being creme de la crop against the top deck. But in all honesty, I think that this is one of the worst shifter decks in the game. The reason why is because some of the other Yu-Gi-Oh decks, they do fine without shifter. They can play under shifter. Exorcist almost needs shifter to be able to do something. Which is even more ironic because the Exorcist monsters don't actually work with Shifter. I would say that Stepsisters are borderline. It's still a great Exceed based Yu-Gi-Oh deck, but I do want to point you out. Some of these other strategies can work with Shifter a little bit better. Dark World. Welcome to the Dark World. We have cookies. Yeah, seriously, if they're not offering cookies, then just get the noodles though. Dark Worlds are an incredibly bad spot. If hand traps don't work, Shifter will. If Shifter don't work, Bestials will. If that don't work, Yo brick. And the crazy thing about it is that Dark World support is not too old. It's really discerning finding strategies that are on the bottom of the budget tier list just because Yu-Gi-Oh has completely power crept itself. Now, Yubel is a strategy that has topped a couple of regionals and I did some thorough testing with the deck. I realized that Yu-Gi-Oh players simply don't read and that's why this deck topped that many times. Oh, it's definitely in takes a good pilot, but it's also takes a good pilot plus your opponent not being able to read. And I'm telling you guys, after thorough testing, this deck is not good enough currently. If your opponent knows what u does, it's a pretty good deck that once it gets its combo going, it's going, but the problem is getting the combo going. Right now, as it stands, the deck is extremely fragile, but once Legacy of Destruction comes out, it does get more support. Hopefully that helps a ton. Next is going to be Labyrinth. Because the deck has fallen completely off the face of the earth, the deck is budget again. That's ironically not a good thing. I think Labyrinth are a solid choice. This deck can be built for about that $100 range, which is good, but the problem is it got cheap because players realized it wasn't good enough. It can't necessarily complete with the top decks in the game, but it does have some natural counters. Hand traps don't work against it. It does have an easy win with the barrier statue against the top decks and can insulate and protect it. And it also plays well against the effect negation hand trap cards. I think that if you are building Labyrinth, you're in a solid choice because any normal trap card is more support. And lastly is purely, you'd actually be surprised where I put this strategy. I think Pearly is sneaky, sneaky good. This is one of the few decks that can also play a ton of hand traps, play under shifter, but more importantly, actually Loki has Fire King's number. An unaffected ex Pearly Noir that can shuffle their cards back into the deck, getting rid of the threat permanently? Yeah, that's it. I think one of the biggest reasons why Konami hit Pearly on the ban list was to prevent it from taking out Fire King or Fire-based Yu-Gi-Oh decks because this deck is actually really good for a budget strategy. You just gotta have the brain. And that's all that I have for the top budget Yu-Gi-Oh decks. I want you guys to let me know down below in the comment section, what do you think I got right? What do you think I got wrong? Of course, big dog, if you wanna see other amazing content, be sure to click on these other videos so I can catch you on the next one.